Hello, my loves. How are you? I had a feeling that you were going to be tuning into this episode. Mm -hmm. My intuition told me that you would love this. Intuition is one of our greatest superpowers. It is the primary tool that we came here with to navigate our lives as a human, as a spiritual being. And unfortunately, it's not something that is practiced right away. It's not something that is developed intentionally. It's not something that is glorified. So often our intuition gets minimized because of our environment, because of people we grew up around, because of what we think we're supposed to do, because of the ego. And for all those reasons, our intuition gets sabotaged, underutilized, small, the it doesn't feel so good kind of vibes. And so I want to use this episode to heighten the way that you utilize your intuition, have a better framework and understanding of what it is and how you can continue to grow it. Does that feel good? I had a feeling it was. All right, my loves, let's get into it. Intuition. Intuition is the unseen, untangible, unreachable from a physical, linear perspective, voice that lives inside of us. Some people like to identify the intuition as the soul, as the higher self, as our senses, as our connection to our angels, our guides, our loved ones that have crossed over. And yes to all of that. All of the above, please. Intuition is such a vast resource that it's not limited to just one thing. It couldn't be. Your intuition is as vast as your life, as your soul, as the infinite possibilities that is the cosmos. So when we look at intuition from that way, we can look at it as a really awesome resource for us. And we can also look at it as something that we're always evolving into and always going to be curious about. No one is 100% a master of intuition. I don't care if you're a psychic or qualify as an intuitive, a medium, whatever it is, no one is 100% intuitive personally or intuitive on behalf of somebody else. However, you can get really sharp. You can get really fine-tuned. You can get to a space where literally you are able to predict things. You are able to know when things are happening. You're able to have premonitions and you're able to use it in a way that you're creating a healthier, more satisfying life for yourself. That's really what it comes down to. I don't believe that intuition's greatest aspect is the fact that, oh, I can see the future, premonitions, right? Like that's a cool bonus. But what I believe intuition is, is learning how to live within yourself and then bring that out into the world so that you can live on this earth and you can do it in the ways that you're meant to as a human and then also do it in the ways that you're meant to as a spiritual being. We came here for both. We came here to help evolve out of the ego and more into our spiritual path. In order to do that, we have to be human and we have to have a connection to source. We have to have both. And when we have both, then we have an opportunity. Then we have a journey. Then we have stuff to sink into. But how do you know what it is that you need to sink into? Well, the ego will show you and so will the intuition. However, we fall too deep sometimes into the ego because our life is set up that way. We're set up to be more of the victim. We're set up to be more in lack. We're set up to do what everybody tells us to. So when our 
life is set up in that way, then the ego is going to run the show. The ego is going to say, ooh, you have to do it this way because this is what's required. This is what expected. This is how we survive. The ego's role is to keep you alive as a human. And so that being said, though, the ego is very simple. It doesn't seem like it, but the ego is actually very simple. Its main role is to keep you safe, and it is going to rely on what it already knows. The ego isn't interested in developing further. The ego isn't interested in finding new resources. The ego isn't interested in broadening its path, educating itself. The ego is interested in keeping you alive, and it wants to keep you alive in the ways that we already know how. So it, when it, you know, when people say like, get out of your comfort zone, like what we're saying is, is get out of your ego's way, get out of the framework of what the ego knows, because that is limited. That is small. It's sustainable. Sure. Right. In some ways it's great. The ego reminds us to eat, take care of ourselves, do the things we need to do so we can keep doing the human thing. However, that being said, it's never going to try to get you to go beyond that. And if it does, it's going to be in a more manipulative, greedy, shadow, lower vibration kind of way, which you also don't want. So either the ego will put you into a situation where you kind of just feel trapped in your everyday life, or it might put you in a situation where you're doing things that feel not like you, that don't actually feel good, but it feels like it's your only way to move forward. It's your only choice to move on. It's the only thing that will keep you safe. But that's not true. Because counter to that is the intuition, right? When someone says, oh, um, it's, it feels counterintuitive. When we say it feels counterintuitive, it's, it's like we're deciding. Do you want to be with the ego or do you want to be with the intuition? Do you want to counter your intuition? Or do you want to go for it? And that's a question we have to ask ourselves. Ego is simple. Ego is baseline. Ego is foundation. Great. And the more that we step into our intuition, the more we can evolve into our spiritual path and the less we have to rely on our ego. Our ego is qualified to be here. It's great when it comes to using our discernment, feeling people out. Sure, you can do that from an ego way so that you are cautious and take your time on things and use your kind of human wherewithal to figure things out. However, there gets to be a point where that's just not going to be enough and that's not how you want to live your life. So that shifts us into the intuition. Intuition has been with you since the day you dropped into the womb, the day that you were birthed into this earth. It is always with you. It is always available to you. Intuition is unique to all of us though in the ways that we identify with it. For me, Intuition comes through in a clairaudient way, most primarily. So when I say clairaudient, within the realms of intuition, there are layers known as the clairs. There's clairsentient, there's clairvoyant, which is like seeing, right? Sentient is feeling. Um, there's different clairs that help us identify how our intuition comes through best. And if any of you have taken my course, The Intuitive Soul, we go through all of this. It's actually on sale right now until November 4th. 2022, if you're listening in real time, um, or you can buy it at whatever price it is now, if you're listening later. And it's a great gateway into learning the ins and outs of your intuition, finding your drop in space to channel, communicating with your guides, your angels, your loved ones, working with the ego versus the intuition. So I highly recommend that throughout the year, there's always live calls where I touch in with everybody and it gives you a great opportunity to really take ownership of your intuition and bring it into your life, especially if you're a coach, healer, teacher, facilitator of any kind, barista, I don't care. Intuition will always help you the more that you connect with it. So for me, my intuition has always come through the strongest through sound. So it's always felt like there's this voice inside of me that's mine, yet not mine. It's like this voice that delivers these words, that delivers these messages, that tells me things. Does anyone connect with that? Does anyone else feel like that's their primary way? For other people, it's this like gut, physical feeling, this pang in the heart, this 
flash of insight for others, this clear vision of something happening. We all have different aspects. However, from if I look back in my life, my earliest memories of my intuition were listening to this voice talk to me and listening to this voice talk to me in a way that felt reassuring, that felt expansive, that felt opportunist. And the more that we connect to whatever our relationship with our intuition is, the more it can grow and the more it can show up in other ways too. For me, my intuition now in my life isn't just clairaudient, though that's my primary. If you work with me, the best way for us to work together is on the phone. Why? Because I'm clairaudient. If I'm looking at you, if we're on video, I get more distracted, I lose my main channel. So if you want to be with me, you want to be with me in my main channel, and my main channel is clairaudient. Thus, we're going to have a conversation on the phone. Okay. That being said, the more that you get into this, the more you can use your intuition in other ways. So I want you to think about that. I want you to think about how intuition registers for you. We're not talking about being a genius in this. We're not saying that you need to be able to read other people. This is about you and yourself and when your intuition has registered or landed for you. A lot of times we know we can tell where our intuition comes from, from mistakes that have happened or unfortunate circumstances that we could have prevented. For example, the other day I was at a retreat and I was going to sit in a chair on, on the deck and I go to pull out the chair and I, I heard those chairs are dangerous. And I was like, huh, they don't look very dangerous. And so I was like, all right, well, I'll be careful when I sit in it, <laughs> you know, because what happens is, is a lot of times we'll get that information, but it's not like don't sit in that chair because you're going to fall. It's almost just like, hey, that chair is dangerous, okay? Or maybe you shouldn't drive home, or maybe you should stay in tonight. It's not saying why, right? Like maybe you should stay in tonight because if you go out, you're going to bump into your ex and you're going to be upset, right? Like it, it's not going to give you that information. It's just giving you a little clue, a little highlight to say, hey, by the way. Now, for some situations, it might be more direct, right? There, there are also times where it's like, don't do this because this will happen. That also is the case. But sometimes it's very subtle. So I heard those chairs are dangerous. And I was like, all right, well, I'll be careful sitting in it. So I'm like just sitting in it, doing my thing, drinking some tea. Uh, time goes by, having conversations with people. All of a sudden, my chair starts to fall backwards. And it's falling backwards to the point where I'm going to literally fall flat on my back um, because of the way it's going. So in that moment, I was able to lunge myself forward and I pulled the back of my left leg um, and it was definitely sore and injured for a good week, but I was able to land pretty gracefully. I didn't even spill any of my tea. The chair fell through the deck. It fell through the wood in the deck. The wood had been rotted. And so the way that I was sitting, you know, I was sitting very carefully, it was enough weight and impact for the chair to fall through the wood. Okay. So that was an example of that. Now, what else could I have done in that moment? It said, oh, those chairs are dangerous. I also had the option to go sit by the lake. You know, I didn't have to sit in the chair in the deck, but there was a part of me that was like, oh, that's where everybody is. Let me be social. Let me talk to everyone. But I could have saved myself and said, you know what, these chairs are dangerous. I'm going to, I wouldn't have said it out loud. <laughs> I would have said, you know what, I'm going to go sit on the grass by the lake. Whole thing would have been avoided. Okay. These are small instances. The more that we listen to those cues, the more that we start to remember like, oh, last time I didn't listen to that message, this happened and it wasn't pleasant. It wasn't desirable. I didn't like it. We start to use that as intel for future circumstances. And then the messages get stronger in other situations around people in our life, around our jobs, around big life decisions. And sometimes they don't make sense. So here's what's up with that. Why is it that sometimes these messages, how does our intuition work? How do these messages get delivered? So from the space of our intuition, our intuition is connected to our soul and our soul is infinite. It is vast. It is ever living. It is beyond time. Okay. So our soul doesn't really go by time. It lives many lives 
It lives in between lives. It lives beyond lives. It's, it's always here. It's always available. So the intuition I like to think is the voice of our soul. The intuition knows the soul contract that we made when we came here to live things out on earth. It already knows because in the space of your soul, there is no time. So if that's the case, your soul already knows your future. It's living off your past and it's living mainly for this moment. If that's the case, the, in, the intuition has intel on all of that. So your intuition can see out into the future because it's already happened. Now, the cool thing is because of free will and because of the way that our life is so bendable, the intuition can see multiple outcomes. So it can see me falling in that chair. It could also see me sitting on the lake. Okay, what's the more desirable outcome? Well, me sitting on the lake, right? Not hurting my leg and potentially falling back and hitting my head. So the intuition is pulling from your future. It's pulling from what's already happened. When we say a prediction, a premonition, it's something that is known. It is something that is possible. And then it is up to us to, to use our free will, use our decision-making process to decide which choice we want to make. And the moment I chose, I'm still going to sit on this chair. So I fell. If I didn't, then the other option would have been I sat at the lake. It's like that movie Sliding Doors. You know, it's like you can take this route or that route, but eventually the routes are still going to lead you on the same path. And, and our lives are very bendable. And even though we signed a soul contract to meet certain people and do certain things, there are lots of different scenarios within that. There's flexibility. There's always the ability to recalibrate. So that's why I like that word bendable. So our, our intuition is tapping into that bendable nature. And, you know, I learned something from the chair situation. So the thing is, is you can't really do it wrong because, yeah, maybe I would have been more comfortable if I chose the lake situation and it never happened. But um, that being said, I learned from the chair situation. It brought some awareness and it reminded me to pay attention to that voice when I get those messages. So there's always, a, you know something that comes from it, even if you quote unquote, feel like you choose wrong, you never choose wrong. And if anything, every time that you either learn from your intuition or listen to your intuition, you grow. So every time like you do listen with that, whether you realize it or not, you grow. Like I would have grown by going to the lake. My intuition would have been that much stronger because of it. So when you make right choices, like, I don't want to say right choices. When you make choices based off of your intuition, you do become intuitively stronger. When you lead your life with that voice instead of the ego voice, you also find that you're happier, that things have a, a way of coming together. There's less urgency. There's less antsiness. There's the ability to wait. One of my biggest egoic qualities is I'm very impulsive. I like getting to the end. I want to know the answer. When I say I want to know the answer, I want to get like to the results. Like I want to, like I'll go on one date with someone and I'll like them. I'm like, okay, I want to know if he's going to be my boyfriend or, you know, I launch a new program and I'm like, okay, I want, you know, a hundred people in the door. Uh, my mom said growing up, like we used to have those charts where you would put a star every time you did something. And then once you got enough stars, you'd get some kind of prize. She'd say that I would like, I found where she kept the stars. So then I would go to the drawer and pull out the stars and put them. I'd always like kind of put an extra star up there to speed up the process. And once she figured that out, we stopped that reward system, right? So that's definitely an egoic trait of me. It's very Leo to be very impulsive, to want to get to the results. And again, it's not because I want the answer so bad. It's not even that. It's just I enjoy the result of things. I enjoy being in the relationship. I enjoy having my students with me. I enjoy having that cash out. I enjoy being in the retreat that I'm hosting. You know, I like being in the thing that I want. I like being in the happening of it. And so because of that, I try to speed up the process. I get very impulsive. I try to hurry it. However, that is not an intuitive approach. I think it's great to want results. And I think that's a great human quality of me to want results, to want to be able to do what I love, to be able to teach, to be able to make money. That being said, though, there's an intuitive framework for how it has to come together. And it has to be done in a way that's very true to me and not doing things 
that I should be doing, or I see my peers doing, or I think it's going to make me money, right? If I do it from that perspective, I find that it's a flaw, as opposed to if I tend to it, nourish it, really allow it to come through from the space of my heart, it becomes something really rich and satisfying, and of course, rewarding. So intuition is something that we have to make peace with and we have to look to as any kind of relationship, right? Like I, I said, like, I'm like, oh, for, I mean, I'm not, it's not really the first date per se, but after a few dates, if I realize I do like this person, it's like, well, I want to, I want to be in the benefits of being in a relationship with you. But that being said, that can't really happen overnight because it's going to take time to really get to know that person you know, and really trust each other and really kind of understand the inner workings of each other. Same with your intuition, right? So your intuition, the more that you are developing it, the more you are growing that relationship you have with it. And the more that you spend time with it, the more that you listen to it, the more that you follow through with it, the more you gain trust and value. And that's how you elevate it. I guarantee the more choices you make based off of your intuition, the happier you'll be. That being said, sometimes when we follow our intuition, we don't get that immediate result or we don't get 100% clarity because it's not literal. The ego is the one that likes things so literal and so logical and so analytical, but the intuition doesn't always work that way. So that being said, when you follow your intuition, the turnaround or the kickback may not be known immediately. It kind of has to do with, you know, the space of manifestation as well. When we're manifesting, we're manifesting from our intuition. There's a reason why you want to manifest what it is that you want to manifest. You're having an intuitive desire. There's something inside of you that is feeling called to make this happen. Now, yes, you could also try to manifest from an egoic desire, right? Something that you think should happen. So you're trying to manifest from that place. That can get really wonky. But if you're in a really clean, clear space and you're like, okay, I want to manifest a loving partner. I want to manifest more money. I want to manifest a new home. Likely there's something attached or tied to your intuition that is driving that out of you, that is making you feel like, yes. This is the perfect time to lean into a new home space. And the more that we live our life in that way, the more there are these really cool coincidences. I don't really believe in coincidences. I believe that when a quote unquote coincidence happens, it's your intuition coinciding with your life. Coincidence is intuition coinciding with your life to make what is most aligned for you possible. And so I want you to have those moments. You're like, whoa, I can't believe that happened, but I can, right? Catch yourself, catch your language, you know, like, how did that happen? Well, it happened because you allowed it to, because you intuitively uh, experienced it and created a process around it and held space for it and gave it room to blossom and expand and unfold and drop into your life. I have a big smile on my face when I say that because that's the beauty of when you live intuitively. Your intuition also knows your standards. It knows what you're capable of. Your intuition is never going to give you a project too big or too out of reach. It's never going to give you an idea that isn't attainable. I want you to realize that. I want you to know that. Yes, it may be something that is very big picture, but you'll get there. And if you start to look back, you can see the little clues that your your intuition has left all along. We're wrapping up Halloween right now. And, you know, Halloween is really cool because I want you to look back at some of the people that you've dressed up as in your life. What were some of the characters that you played? Some of the roles you showed up as? How many of you were a witch, a gypsy? a superhero, a baker, you know, how how many of you were things that now somehow correspond to your current life? Or even maybe were uh, a lot of roles that maybe you were in a past life that you're now feeling called to play out in this one. You're saying, oh, it's just a costume. There's a reason you picked that. 
there's something that you're channeling there. There's some kind of intuitive connection, which is what I love about Halloween. Because Halloween's an opportunity where the world says, hey, be whatever you want. You can dress up as whatever you want because the world's like, oh, it's just dress up. It's pretend. It's not real. But like to me, I see that as real. I see that as true. If a child says, I want to be this, honor it because there's something within them. There's something within their intuitive development that's saying this character matters in some way or another. And maybe it's just because it's fun and it's playful and the child just wants to feel that way. But maybe it's something looking back on their life. They're like, oh, it makes so much sense. It makes so much sense that I kept asking my mom every year to always be a gypsy, be a fortune teller. Why did I want to be those things? There was no one telling me that I needed to be, but I wanted to be. I wanted to make sure that I was a witch. That was third grade. I loved being a witch, even though it was so simple in a way. It felt great. I wanted to be, I dressed up as an indigenous girl. I've dressed up as a flower and I freaking love me some flowers. A flapper, past life connection over there, right? So, uh, you know, it doesn't just have to be Halloween. That's just fresh on my mind. Um, but our, our intuition is working through us in a lot of ways that we don't always realize. Um, and so look to your hobbies. Look to things that you don't put a lot of pressure around, things that you do for fun, Okay that's a gateway as well. When you entertain the things that are fun for you, that no one's putting any pressure on you about, no one's saying you're supposed to do this, like natural, genuine interests that you have. There's something to that as well. Why intuitively are you doing that? Why intuitively are you choosing to grow that? Why intuitively does that feel good for you? That's a nice way to kind of enter into this space. And then the more that you grow it, the more you can drop into it the more you can easily switch on and off. I know when my ego is talking and I know when my intuition is talking. I know where the ego lives inside of me. I know where my intuition lives inside of me. And I know how to navigate between the two. And I know when the ego is taking over and there's simply nothing else I can do but surrender to it. That also happens, you know, and that's okay. Again, like I said, no one's going to ever be 100% intuitive in this life anyway, in this reality as we know it so far. We haven't achieved that yet. And then once you continue to grow it, it becomes the voice when you're meditating, when you're practicing yoga, when you're on a run, when you're in nature, when you're making love, when you're with your best friend, when you're cooking. It is the fruit of your life and your living. And then it also becomes the connection to talking to your team. We all have guardian angels that look out for us, that are also giving us messages that we connect to through the thread of intuition. Our primary guides that came here to look out for us, to keep us on track. Intuition is another way. And then, of course, those that have crossed over, loved ones that send us signs. It's our intuition that picks up on that. It's our intuition that notices 444 on that license plate in front of us and knows that it's a little wink from our angels that can see your, like last, yesterday was um, Sawin and I was doing a I, was connect I like to connect that evening into November 1st, which is All Souls Day, uh, with my ancestors, with people that I've loved in my life that have since gone to the other world. And so I was connecting with my great-grandmother, Conchetta, and one of our uh, symbols or connections is jasmine, the, the flower. And so uh, I was working with her and I was asking her some questions about relationship and, and where things stand in that realm. And she was giving me some insight and it all felt really good. It was definitely coming from her. I was definitely getting the, she was definitely delivering the message and I was definitely receiving it. That being said, you know, there's always still a little bit of a question, you know, is, is this on point? Is this for real? You know? And so I always like to ask for like an extra sign or symbol or something to let me know that it's all in alignment. And so I was at yoga uh, I went to a restorative yoga class and at the end they did a yoga nidra and she was guiding us through the yoga nidra 
And uh, she told us to turn at the jasmine bush. And I was like, what? The jasmine bush? Like, that's such a not random thing to say, right? Because there are no coincidences. Uh, but it was a moment where I was like, okay, cool. This is my intuition coinciding with my life. And all I had to do was pick myself up and take myself to this restorative yoga class after I had done the meditation. I didn't know that was how I was going to get my sign from her. I didn't know she was going to keep the party going through that yoga nidra, through that teacher. And that teacher certainly, I imagine, did not know that I was having that moment and needed to include that in her script. So we, you know, it, it, you're going to start to see that it all is a network and you're going to start to see that this earth that people that live upon it, that nature, it all connects. It all is sending out, we're we're sending out signals with our intuition, but then we're also a receptor to the signals as well. And that's why then we start to pick up on things for other people. And again, usually it's in moments when we really are surrendering. You know, this term surrender can be a little confusing. Like, what does it mean to surrender? Like, stop, drop, and roll, like I did when there was a fire drill. Or stop everything. And it's like, no, surrender means live your life without being so attached. And that's because that's the sweet spot when our intuition can really guide us. So for example, a lot of times people will get messages when they're just washing the dishes or folding laundry because they're busy doing a task at hand, yet their mind is free. And so from that space, messages can come through. You can be thinking about someone and then they call you. You can pick up on messages for people. A lot of times when I pick up messages from my friends, I actually don't anymore tell them right away. I wait until they tell me and then I give them the information. So they'll say like, hey, this thing is coming up for me. And I'm like, oh, I heard a message about that. This is what I heard. And then it's like confirming for them. Um, A lot of times with clients, I tend to not look too deeply into my schedule for the week ahead if I'm reading your chart. I won't pull up the information ahead of time. I won't look at your insight form because if I do, then my channel opens up into your channel and I start receiving messages, which doesn't always make sense, right? If we're meeting on a Thursday and I open up your insight form on Sunday, that's a lot of time I'm going to be spending with your energy. And could I shut it down and could I shield myself and blah, blah, blah? Yes, but I'd rather just wait until the day before to open up your chart uh, and start to get those insights coming through. But I'll get it for friends. I'll get it for loved ones. So again, it's like you're driving the car and you've been in the car for a while. You know, you're uh, at the grocery store and you're just kind of doing your grocery store thing. You know, it, it happens in moments when you least expect it because that's how life really works. That's when the miracles happen often either at the last minute or when you least expect it, but usually not right off the, the, the gate, right off the start. And so if you're someone that has an impulsive shadow quality like I do, usually the answer is not immediate, is not the first thing. It's usually when you least expect it. It's usually when you detach for a little bit, give it a little space, give it a little time and let it grow. So those are some insights on the intuition. We're at 33 minutes, which feels very prime, very divine. And if you want to continue this conversation, if you want to continue to build your intuition, I highly recommend you check out the intuitive soul course. Level one is the way to go. Uh, It has all the, like I said, ins and outs of your intuition, working with your energy centers, the chakras, receiving messages, opening your physical body to be able to channel hygiene so that you're protecting your energy, right? You know, being an intuitive is a beautiful thing, but you also don't want it to get out too much because then people are going to start to pick your brain, so to speak. Or you don't want to be too open to receiving messages on behalf of people that you shouldn't be receiving messages for, right? Uh, So how to navigate that, how to talk to your team, talk to people that have loved over, loved over, (laughs) that that have crossed over, that you love, and all those different dynamics. There's over 11 hours worth of video content, 45 pages of workbooks, bonus episodes uh, on the tarot, pendulum, cacao ceremonies, all that yummy stuff that our intuition loves. So if you want to check it out, go to danielmercurio.com, go to courses or shop. I don't know. You know how to use a website. It's up there. It's on sale, like I said, till November 4th. And stay tuned for the next episode. I freaking adore you. Thank you for listening.